Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and as well, good morning to those folks waking up early on the East Coast of USA, and I guess good afternoon to our partners and potential clients out in UK and EMEA region. My name is Tommy Lee. I'm the VP of Sales for America, North America, and I appreciate you spending a bit of your time today and being introduced to our I6 series. Um, people are just signing on. I'll just sort of give them another minute or two uh, as they sign in so that we get a full audience. Uh, I think we're going to have a little bit of fun today, uh, but I'll reserve that as you know, people sort of sign on. Um, a lot of early birds today. I noticed that I came in. I was sort of surprised to see many people have already been on. Thank you very much for your punctuality. And uh, hang on, and I'll get started within the next 45 seconds. Okay, thank you for your patience. I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, fantastic. Um, let's get started. Again, uh, what is the I6 series? Again, for those who just signed in, welcome aboard. Uh, the I6 series is really the next generation of uh, door access units that Fanville is proud to introduce uh, to the society. In fact, uh, some of the distributors that we have globally have samples already in stock, and we're basically ramping up production on these things as we move forward. Um, having said that, uh, we're just going to go ahead and really provide a lot of the convenient features and kind of showing how this series differentiates from even the current series that we're doing today. Uh, I think they add a lot of value in maybe adding some style uh, tones that will make it a little bit more acceptable in the multi-dwelling unit, medical facilities, the hospitals, et cetera. And I'm going to go through a lot of applications for you in the future. So Having said that, uh, why don't I just stop and just do some little bit of house cleaning uh, before we move forward. Uh, for those who just signed on, um, I, did, uh, I did actually have some handouts that I put in, so there's no need to jot down any notes. If you look at your clients, you can actually download uh, a soft version of this presentation for your future reference on a PDF file, so feel free to do that. Um, in addition, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to go to your question box and be able to you know, address any questions as you want uh, on that question, and I'll be more than happy to address that at the end of the webinar, okay? So having said that, let's go ahead and move on and have some fun. If you notice that in the introduction of this webinar, uh, we also put in a lucky draw, and what we're gonna do today is at the middle of the webinar, as well as at the end of the webinar, I'm going to draw two lucky winners that will be present. Now, what we've done is actually taken all the registrations that we captured, and also doing that, we've also kind of put a, a, a random picker that will go out, and I'm going to go out and do three strikes. Not everybody shows up on these webinars, but what I'm going to do is sort of do a three strike, and hopefully at the within the third try, capture somebody in the audience. Now, if you happen to be captured on the audience during that time, feel free to show up on that contact and, and type yes or, I'm pre or here, whatever, in the question box. And I'll be more than happy to provide this uh, level of, 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 of thing. I see some people are already testing it out, which is great. But once that comes up, click yes, and then you could just sort of send uh, your contact information to sales at fanville.com and we'll be more than happy to arrange this bundle, which really couples our new i6 uh, series along with a uh, desk or wall mount unit that we have. Uh, the combination of these two will really give you all the nice features you have. You have a large screen that kind of gives you a touchscreen access to see what we're going to have with the widescreen uh, cameras, and then gives you buttons that will be able to respond and allow people to enter the door. So. Good luck to everybody. This will be our I-64 and I-53W suit. Now, 
for everybody's reference in the future, we're also going to have a promotion based on these two bundles as well. So if you don't get one for free based on this drawing, then you'll be able to get something when we issue a test drive uh, unit and be able to you know, offer something at an NFR price to give you an ability to test these two moving forward. So having said that, that should be fun. It'll be sort of like a slot machine and we'll move forward onto the presentation. Now, for those that are not familiar with FanDuel, I wanted to sort of introduce a, a solution slide set because, you know, we're, we're a really rapidly growing brand. And what I want to do is just kind of spend one slide and just going over the different types of solutions that we have. Everyone out there knows that everyone's and uh, improving their communications, switching out from the old analog or whatever proprietary interface into a SIP interface. And where Fanvo really concentrates on is really developing SIP endpoints that are all SIP compatible. And they could really be divided into three or four categories. The first thing is really SIP desk phones, of which this is really uh, our major line that we have that we go ahead and build desk phones that are targeted for businesses as well as remote locations and as well we also have a target focus for hospitality this obviously isn't our full line of products but however it's just a small snapshot to kind of give you an overview of our category now beyond just communications many of our partners like to sort of spread their solution selling into a lot of different other SIP type of endpoints. And Fanvo kind of provides a good umbrella of all of these things. And a rapid growing uh, marketplace are really door access units, which really can be applied to apartment buildings, medical facilities, campuses. I mean, you name it. I'm going to show a couple of application slides in the future. But beyond what we've been selling existingly with our uh, current uh, offerings, we're going to be introducing the new I series in several different flavors, not only on the outside, but we also have indoor stations, as we've shown at the bundle, that mounts to the wall, which comes standard out of the box. Or you can get a desk mount uh, stand that allows you desk mount access. And the great deal about this is this is also including Wi-Fi and, and has a two-sip phone. You can use it as a phone if you want, but you could also use this to couple with this. That will give you a nice new interface to be able to really interact and manage um, your door rack systems. Beyond that, we also have intercoms, which really provide a very simple interface for one button access. This is great if you want emergency contacts. You don't want people dialing in separate numbers. You just want instant contact to be able to reach the local police, the local guard, or what have you. And you can have units that are based on different types of environments with and without video cameras. So we really have models that really fit any type of requirement as well as any environment that you might be able to fit in. And last but not least, we have SIP public addresses. And what this does is when you're upgrading a building or a campus, you're gonna have some uh, interfaces that are based on an analog. For example, you might have PA systems that's been sitting in a rooftop that are working, the amp works fine, but you don't necessarily need to upgrade those into IP speakers as well because that's a very expensive option but if they have working analog speakers you could put this gateway in between that will convert the SIP into analog and be able to use that as a basic simple SIP interface uh, over across several different extensions that will allow you to do for PA speakers you could use it for high-rise elevators or lifts as people will call it in different regions but really it, it's really up to you and how you want to do that now, coupling all of these different endpoints, many integrators and service providers find out, gosh, it's really a lot of work to get all of these things configured. Besides the configuration that some might have on their PBX servers that they have here, Fanville also provides to our partners and people who sign up a, 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 a Fanville device management system. The latest introduction we have is a cloud-based system which really allows you to pre-configure many of these things so that once they get plugged in into the field, you can go ahead and actually have them auto-configured. And once you have one or two devices done, then it's a matter of just repeating it, setting up different account information or different types of settings, and you can roll these things out, not only for our business phones and hospitality units, but all the units that we describe here, which really, improves the time to market and the time of integration that you have and you also gain a lot of visibility to that which really is a differentiator because you know we are a SIP provider and providing lots of volume here we give that same level of capability throughout 
Now that's my overview of our whole solution. And let's get uh, focused in on the introduction for the i6 series. We're just gonna go over a couple of um, uh, features and going over the overview, the highlights, typical applications, and just really go over a few scenarios that sort of make us a little bit different than the people that, that also sell a competitive type of brand. So now let's go into the overview. This is one of uh, four different models. This is the I-64 model that we've shown here. This is one of the units that we're gonna give away. And the great thing about this is this actually contains really a keypad along with an RFID uh, reader that we have here. The good news is that all four of these units really comply to a lot of the I, uh, uh, IP66 uh, in terms of water resistance, you know, IP66 really denotes the standard by which you can actually provide splashing, rainfall. It's really the one spec beyond immersion. I think if you have, you know, emergent specification requirements, I think you have a bigger problem than getting access into your door. But nonetheless, these are built to very high specs in terms of water resistance, humidity, as well as even durability for IK07. Uh, type of thing so that even though we made the look to be a lot more, how would you say, uh, less military looking per se and making it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing for uh, MDU type of applications or multi-dwelling units so that you can approach and these things will actually light up and work, but I'll get more into that uh, moving on in the future. We also have a two megapixel um, uh, VGA camera that's associated here and this a digital camera would be able to fit into many of the different IP endpoints that you might have in the offices and I'll show all the different features as we have moving forward. And we also include lots of other convenient features which I'll show in your future slides. This is the full spectrum that we have. Um, we have everything ranging from the I-64, 63, 62, 61, and all four of these things really comply to all the durability standards that I just mentioned earlier before. These have different applications of which here gives uh, the entry person really the ability to enter in codes uh, for many businesses that might have a specific code for an individual. You can go ahead and actually put in uh, different types of, 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 of keypad entries and everything like that and you can log them in. Now, in addition, you also have all of these units have cameras as well. You know, how do you store these cameras? Well, the good news is that all of these units have a TF memory card that you can actually put inside these things that actually raise the memory uh, capability up to about 128 gigabytes of memory. So with that, you know, add on that you can get anywhere commercially, you can really boost up the memory feature of this if this is something that you need to really store a lot of the video capture units that you have in these units. This obviously is really a dedicated five button where this will be greatly targeted if you have a multi-dwelling unit or, or, or a multiple office type of unit. You know, in addition to RFID cards or keypads, <coughs> all of these will support it moving forward. But this is between, the difference between the I-61 and the I-62 is the I-62 actually has a hard button as well as the I-61 has a total soft key button here. You know, how will these light up? Well, in the future, we'll actually show that when a person comes and arrives in front of the camera, it'll actually have a, a detection where the light will automatically light up, giving that user the ability to be able to see what is available moving forward. And as they move away, it'll actually go away. So these are the different types of interfaces. For those who are familiar with our telephone equipment, we recognize that people either love or hate touch screens, and, for, and we actually provide a choice for both. So if you like touch screens, great. We will actually have a touch screen that will cater to that. But for those who prefer an actual hard button, then we actually have a button face that will actually do that. All will comply to the high standards of water resistance and temperature, as I mentioned earlier before. As well as, as increasing the ability to uh, comply with more standards, these will also be wig band, uh, physical data interface standards as well. Uh, to comply with people that are hard of hearing, we also included audio induction loop technology into this. So if you happen to be wearing a hearing aid that actually can be triggered by the audio induction loop, uh, the amplification will also increase to that um, 
a hearing aid as well so that they can hear what's coming in and out. So these are the nice little features that we have of these units that are moving forward that really makes this a, 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 a device that can be used by the majority of people. Now, I'm just going to go over some of the, the spec features that we have on these things. And I mentioned before, uh, don't worry too much about the hard memory that we have that's operational for this unit, but this memory can be greatly increased by using a, a, a TF card that you could put inside it that will greatly increase the internal storage of, of memory. Now, you can have this camera also interface with an existing server as well and use the server, to, but this provides you with the capability of being able to turn on and off and have specific codes for individuals that come in and out of your office so that you can track who's coming in, who's coming out. You can arrange it so that they can take pictures of them as they're coming in and out of the office as well. And these are really the, the sort of the great overview. And as you could tell with the wide temperature range of minus 40 to 70 degrees C, this really gives it a wide operating range of which it used to be handled by the more ruggedized units that we did, uh, that we issue currently. And we brought that level of ruggedness down to this level where you can actually have it, uh, you know, work in most commercial environments and it would last a very long time. Beyond that unit, uh, we also have the ability to really address, in this case, this looks like more like a multi-dwelling unit, where you might have a dedicated you know, five-button access. And this could be uh, an executive offices for different commercial buildings, or perhaps you can have an apartment building that has up to five, and this will actually have a camera. And you can really do this with either the wall mount units that I showed before with the I-53W, which is the part of the bundle, or you can use or any particular desk phone that has the ability. Now, if that phone happens to have the ability to display VGA graphics, which uh, Fanville does, you can go ahead and actually display it in the highest resolution, but you could also use others, but obviously the display on the one level uh, photograph would end up being low resolution if it doesn't support it. But in either case, you have a simple interface that's capable of doing that. And it gives really a lot of our current partners who've been dedicated to just phones the ability to be able to expand out to these phones and be able to be adopted by many other uh, solutions that you could bring to the uh, office space. Now, going into the um, I-62 and 61, these are the one button interfaces. So very often you may just wanna have a single entry and this also is coupled with an RFID card, again, with the same level of, of type of interfaces as well, as well as the ruggedness of, of putting this in. All of them will have the features that I mentioned earlier. This one is the touch button, and this one is actually the touch screen that you can go ahead and see. And both of these things will provide the user access to be able to gain a speed dial access into one so that somebody on the other end, which is an apartment, or someone that's that's playing a, a receptionist role can be able to answer you and be able to provide you know, a secure entryway into the gate that that this thing is blocking you know all of these units have security so that if anybody tried to tamper in and going in an alarm will actually go off that will notify the owner of the building or whoever use who's controlling this unit the ability to say that this unit has been tampered with okay now let's talk about the feature highlights i'm not going to go over a lot of all of these features but the real key uh, feature here is really the zero touch deployment um, similar to our telephones, uh, these units do have the capability of having out-of-the-box provisioning. What do I mean by that? If you already have a template <clears throat> that you've already set up previously for a different site on one of these units or any of the units, you can modify those templates to actually configure this to set up specific time frames. And once you're used to that template, you could then duplicate those templates so that when you log in the MAC address, of all of these things and once these units encounter you know the internet it will actually go out and says ah this is owned by john doe company and yet it will actually reach out and pull up the configuration file that you've set up so that it allows a central deployment of being able to upload the config file for any location that has internet connection now you may not have internet connection based on the site but you can also pre-configure these things so that once you put it in, it will automatically work too as well. And one of the things I wanted to state is that if you just have an internal application, you can actually use this 
you know, point to point using SIP without necessarily taking advantage of having a PBX. So it really depends on how you want to set this thing up. You can go and have a point to point having this interface directly with the into office. And if there is no need for, say, remote access for someone to call it on the outside, they will then be able to use this point to point without the need of using an extension on a PBX if necessary. In addition to that, we've also added linkages to security systems and remote access control, which is critical in cases where you don't have a person that's on-prem all the time. You can actually gain access for times in which you can actually get people in on remote things. I'll talk a little bit more about that. On some of the features, uh, we also have a backbound plate, as, you, as we'll show in some of these uh, videos soon, but we provide a really short interface that takes up the least amount of space so that this makes it very easy to mount. Uh, we obviously have some aluminum design and numeric keypads that are made to withstand a lot of the impacts that most of the people have in a high commercial outfit, as well as being able to uh, identify speech quality. You know, we made a lot of improvements to our XU product line of improving speeches. We've also made the same enhancements to make sure that the speech is enhanced for these speakers as well for those with and without hearing aids, okay? And all those things and be able to couple that so that you have a simple interface, depending on whether it's a keypad, five button access or single button access going in. Now, in this case is strong and durable. You know, this is a case where it actually shows where you can mount this flush on a wall if this is something that you're looking for. But coupled with that is really made to withstand many of the external environments, whether it's cold or hot, or, you know, or it's subject to rain or, or, or dust and wind. And these things will really are made to last for a very, very long time. And it also has anti-tamper proof alarm that I mentioned earlier as well, having high uh, wide bandwidth in terms of temperature uh, configuration. Smart and convenient, you know, what does that really mean? Those are kind of nice words, but with, because these things have a camera, it almost has a periphery interface where you can enable or disable. So when a person actually shows up in front, the actual unit will actually light up, illuminating those particular buttons. Or you can you can enable it to take a picture of anybody who does it, or you can configure it not to. You can really make this work to depending on how you want to do it, so that they can log in and you can capture all of these different uh, people here doing it. And this way, you can actually log up to. Uh, locally oh wait 128 gigabytes i thought it was actually higher my mistake on that if i said uh, a higher number before or you could have a local server if you have one that's existing that might take that as well so that's how it's enabled and then remote access control with a mobile phone of course you know i think everyone here has probably one or two mobile, one and a half mobile phones that they have access to and for those people who need it we're actually working in a process now. One of the clients that we're working on now is being able to work with Microsoft Teams and being able to build a bridge so that you can actually be able to go in and access these units and see, and you can use their keypad to be able to dial in to see what, you know, if you can, if, if that person is a friendly or a foe to enter into your residence or to, or to your office building. So these things are actually moving forward and it's something that we're working on. And by the time these things go into production, hopefully we'll get all of those capabilities fixed moving forward. As I mentioned as well, uh, we have a hearing aid capability where you can also have people with hearing intents. It contains an induction loop antenna so that if you happen to have a hearing aid and they can't hear it in front, you can actually wear this so that we can actually amplify the actual hearing aid so that they can couple and be able to communicate without devices seamlessly moving forward. Now, obviously, these devices don't work by themselves. They work with a lot of other type of endpoints as well, where it works with IP phones, electronic locks. You can have access systems where you can have a door access for people that are you know, bound to a wheelchair. If they go in or out, they can push a button that will automatically open the door. These units will, will accommodate those type of features moving forward, and you can actually use all of these things to monitor, whether it's a sensor unit or actual wall mount that you have at an indoor station for a multi-dwelling unit moving forward. So they, all of the internals are inside and you'll be able to gain access to it looking at the user manual and all the connections. And as well, in terms of connection wise, this also complies with a lot of industry standards. I don't know what the standard is off the top of my head, but there are a standard connection that provides basically a three input 
uh, connection that's that's capable of plugging this thing in, and you can gain access to a lot of interfaces that exist out there. Okay. <clears throat> And obviously, this is just a quick introduction to zero touch deployment. Um, once you get one or two templates that are put together, at this point, you can go ahead and find out you know, how easy it is to go ahead and configure these devices moving forward. Okay, and now I think it's time to do our first webinar or lucky drawer. What I have done here, for those who may have signed on late, is that we're coupling this I-64 and I-53W to a lucky winner, and the random numbers or names that are drawing out is drawn out through the people who registered on our site and within a few seconds i'm going to press stop and if you happen to be lucky go ahead and click yes and that person that's going to win will end up being registered and we'll go ahead and communicate with you and see if uh, you'll do it so we'll do this three times and see hopefully it'll win okay one two three boom oops Okay, if this person is actually watching this, this uh, webinar, please go ahead and click yes, if you happen to be here. Okay, great, we got a yes, so fantastic. Uh, whoever Fabia Kaon <laughs> is, uh, you just won a great um, uh, thing. And so now you can, we'll go ahead and make sure, I'll, I'll take a login for that. Let me see, Fabia. C A O N at Gmail. Congratulations, and we'll, there'll be one more time at the end of this webinar to be able to win the same as well, and we'll move on that way. Congratulations, and we'll move on. There'll be one more at the end of this webinar to be able to do that, okay? Now let's go ahead and move on. Now some application scenarios. Now in the application scenario, these are just typical applications. For those who are very familiar with it, this might be you know, second nature, but obviously we identify several different uh, campuses, villas, businesses, and things like that moving forward, and a lot of different places where really the spectrum of all the things that we offer could really come into place. In the case of an I-2, a lot of the things that may come into place is when you have villas, you might have the entranceway may have a different types of buttons here. This could be a five button if it's a five button location, or it could be a keypad if the keypad happens to address a lot more than, uh, than five different units moving forward. Or conversely, you could have an entranceway that goes in and have a single keypad up front in front of all of these villas. This may sound forward, but depending on what type of scenario you might have, you might have the guard that might control all of the access and then they can go ahead and provide input and output either remotely through a smartphone or through a control system using our phones or whatever keypad that they might have up front. Then in the case of commercial buildings, uh, the level of applications become a lot larger because in commercial buildings, you might have a guard that's up front that might use say our A32i, which is really our large screen Android interface that provides a large touch screen, giving you access to all of these different endpoints out there that can really provide control, not only to our i6 series interfaces, but you can also have in an apartment building, some capabilities of having wall mount units that are just capable of being able to display with or without video, uh, people that can enter in your door. We also have intercoms that I mentioned earlier that can go into the back room of, of, of uh, loading docks for businesses, as well as being able to attract analog interfaces such as elevators that go up and down a building. You know, all of those are really connected via an analog interface, and you can actually upgrade that to communicate via SIP so that people will have a way to communicate in and out of your building here as well. Now, obviously, in an enterprise office, this now merges into using more of our business phones. Uh, this could be hospitality as well, which will then take advantage of our hospitality lines. But in the case of business phones, you could obviously use this the front gate and the, and the desk and be able to use whatever monitoring tool. The good news about some of our i6Us and i7 series is that they all have the VGA quality monitors that you can actually use to get to capture the best uh, reception of our phones as well. And you can also use this on our reception phone, which is the X210 series, uh, giving you that capability with all the about 106 different DSS keys, giving you full access control to all the different phones that are within the office. Obviously, schools and parks, 
Uh, some of these schools and parks, we might have intercoms that might reside in the remote parking area for security reasons. And as well, we can also go ahead and provide a lot of capabilities that will give you all of the in and outputs of you know, local security, door access, as well as intercom capabilities throughout your offices uh, moving forward. Now, checking out the comparisons, I'm not going to go over all of the different features, but some of the things that are unique uh, to our intercom series is being able to address some of the codec features. These are the ones that are that, are, that will collect uh, Opus codec or G70, G722, which is really high band, and also being able to address high band on the low bandwidth situations as well. In the former access card numbers, I believe the, the card access was like 5,000. This we decided to upgrade to support up to 10,000 card access numbers. And as well, you can also increase to increase the memory by using a card, a memory card, that you can insert these things to go ahead and do that. So really, it's made to really integrate as well with a lot of uh, third-party systems out there. We're working on right now, we're almost complete in testing out and working with the very popular Microsoft Teams, but they are one of many other third-party applications that we're also using to interface with these things as well. But I don't want to go into it, but these are sort of the high-level features that it will support. These are just some of the things that I talked about going on VIF type of standardizations, TF card reader, all these are based on standards that are really makes this really a sort of a plug and play for people that know how to install these units coming in and out. And we actually have ways of being able to mount them flush or wall mount units, depending on what you want to do and having the level of durability, all of these things meet the, the, the different uh, environmental specifications that will suit you, okay? So now let's go ahead and start off our second brand here, and this is going to go through uh, uh, the whole list, and hopefully good luck to everybody on this uh, second round of slot machines, <laughs> and I wish everybody luck in winning this, and I'm going to go ahead and see who's going to be the lucky winner here. The end point is five, four, three, two, one. Okay, Vilna Roman, if you exist, please go ahead and say you are there. Let me double check here. Uh, let's see. Are you present? Oops, hang on. Vilna Roma, uh, I don't see this person here. VLNA Roman, are you present out there? Uh, I don't see a yes coming up from you. If not, then I'm going to move on to the next uh, person. Going once, going twice, I haven't necessarily seen uh, a thank or, or here or a yes on the thing. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next uh, person here. This will be Going for strike two. The next person that might end up winning this is five, four, three, two, one. Whoops. Huh. Interesting. That was a blank. Let's just start. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Lydia Aguilar, if you exist, say you're here or whatever on your question box, and we'll be more than happy to have a unit sent to you. Do you have your question box saying yes? We're not going once, going twice. Hmm, okay, nothing yet. This will be the last one. If, if this this one does the last one, I may randomly pick uh, someone out of the audience to see if anybody comes up. So here's another last chance to do it. And if you happen to be present, just say yes on your question mark and I'll be more than happy to get one uh, started. Okay, Rozzy, if you happen to be present, please go ahead and say yes or no on it, and I'll be more than happy to have one sent to you. Huh, this is interesting. Nobody yet. This is interesting. Okay, then what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to randomly pick somebody out in the audience and see who will be out there. Let me go ahead to attendees and just randomly select somebody that's already present. Okay, who I'm gonna pick here is a person by the name of 
of Andrea De, Andrea Delidi, I think, is the person here. So here it is, Andrea Delidi. If you happen to be here, which I actually see you, great. You actually raised it. Then I'll go ahead and have you set on. Sorry, everybody, for those who didn't win. Andrea Delidi. Uh, for for that and what i'm going to do now is um uh, thank you for those lucky winners uh, we are going to have a promotion uh, i think starting in the march time frame for this time frame whether it's march or april i haven't decided when it's going to start but this will be put together as a sort of a startup bundle that you can also gain as well now i'm going to move into the q a session and really i'm going to use this session to uh address uh any questions that you might have on here, some of the things that we're working here uh, for the questions. Anybody wants to put questions, you could put questions on the question and answers. Let me see, are those devices able to forward video during the call uh, originating stage? So before the user's answers and requiring it as mandatory. Uh, that would almost be a video preview. I think in this case, the call will have to be initiated, whether you do it locally or remotely. Uh, then, you know, I think it depends. For these units, uh, device would be able to forward a video during the call. Yeah, once the call has established, that if you have the right mobile capability or whether you have a desk phone, you'll be able to see the video in advance. Now, some of our phones, I remember, have a, have a feature called video preview, which will do, at least on the desk phone, be able to have a direct connection to these door units and be able to capture these video units in advance. Uh, but I have to confirm that whether or not it works with the i6. I do know that that was a feature that was standard on our current offerings. And I would be a little surprised if that doesn't, isn't surprised. I'll be surprised if it's not supported in the new features moving forward. So for now, I would say the answer is yes, but I would look into that video preview moving forward because that is available on some of our phones capable of moving forward. Uh, let me see. If nobody in the company is possible to respond to the smart door phone, the person that has the ring and the bell, hopefully that system will be automated so that it has to be linked to a central center. Yes, it can be linked to a central server. Uh, it doesn't have to be linked directly to a phone or a server, but this is also meant to be able to link to a central server that, that provides access. And then you can provide access and certain codes that will send and be able to release and have that code put in. Um, how are they connected? Uh, they're connected through an IP address. I know many people out there have worked with analog cameras before in the past. This is an IP camera. So in many cases, uh, many clients will, in the case of an IP environment, you can actually address these cameras through an IP address. Just like if you were, were to plug in a commercial system, many of the electronic cameras have an IP address when you plug it in at your home or your office, and you can take that IP, plug it into your specific phone setting, for example, a display setting, and it'll be able to grab that video capture onto whatever IP address it is. And you just have to make sure that you align the VGA capabilities. If your monitor happens to be VGA quality, I would set that up. And then that way it'll stream the highest resolution in and be able to see that video on your endpoint. Okay. Uh, when is the availability of the product, product list price? Uh, I would contact your local distributor on it. Uh, I know that as, uh, as we speak today, we just initiated or released initial sample stages now, and we're going into production, I believe, in the March timeframe. So uh, we're ramping up production as we started, and some of the distributors out there may already have samples already for you to start kick driving and test driving some of these things moving forward. Okay, uh, some of the other questions. Anything about VCX integration? Yes, in fact, um, we, 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 we intend to send some advanced units, but obviously we're not the only endpoint that they have. So we're working with a lot of our third-party PBX manufacturers to get these things integrated into their PBXs as well. We don't have that established now, but then yet as moving forward, some eventually it will end up in many of the, our partners' hands as well, getting it integrated. Uh, what is the price list for Italy? Um, I don't have that price list, but I would go ahead and contact our distributor 
uh, out in Italy. Uh, globally, we sell all our products through distribution, which actually contains our local stock. And then from there, you can go ahead and get your specific price list that goes out there and moving forward. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. The difference from the i30 from the previous series. Yeah, the i30 is a very, very uh, popular model for indoors. Uh, the i30 may not have, it is great if you have sort of an awning experience. This actually has a higher capability in terms of being able to support i66, which I think i66 has a higher rating in terms of being water resistance. The i30 has some level of water resistance. I believe it was i65 which means that it, it can contain mist and, and, and different types of droplets, but this one has a higher spec in terms of capability, but both have very much the same capabilities moving forward. But this will also have the capability of adding uh, memory cards moving forward, okay? So that seems to be it. I think I addressed most of it. I wanna thank everybody for your time. Thank you very much for your time already. And if you have any further questions, Feel free to send out any business questions to sales at fanville.com, or if you have any technical questions, feel free to send it out to support at fanville.com, and I'll be more than happy to be directed to the right local person. And again, uh, appreciate your, 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 your time. Stay healthy out there, and hope we can cross paths soon and meet you out on the floor. Okay, take care, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.